There's this theory that these scientists came up with after studying tribes in India and Africa, South America. The smaller tribes didn't have any government, didn't need any. They could sit down and talk out their problems, decide where to plant crops to hunt. It was just a big family, really. But when the number of people got up around 500, if there wasn't any government, the strongest people would take advantage of the weakest. Every time, without fail, they would enslave, rape, steal, enrich their lives at the expense of other people's lives. Government's men's way of trying to control our behavior, but it can't be controlled. That's what we are. Sooner or later, the kind of people that would enrich themselves at your expense, we use the government to do it. And mark my words, one day they'll create laws to control what we say, how we think. They'll outlaw our right to disagree if we let them. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great millstone who do rule well. Shalom to you of us who are hopeful. Shalom to the elect. Uh, Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. That opening clip was from the show 1923 starring Harrison Ford on the uh, Paramount Plus streaming network. For those uh, not in the know, by now I'm pretty sure you've already guessed the topic for this uh, quick lesson. Governments, principalities, and and rulerships are always a popular biblical discussion, especially lately considering the ongoing conflict between Russia and the Ukraine, uh, NATO, and America's war against the old republic by proxy, and tensions rising between the U.S. and China over Taiwan, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and how they all speak to prophecy coming to pass. Now, I'm not big on scientific studies unless the findings speak to what is written of and can be filtered through the truth that is the scriptures. And simply put, Esau has made a living on his pseudo science. In fact, he's weaponized it and constantly wields it as a tool to police and subjugate we who he considers the sheeple. Uh, never mind Esau's science is uh, subject to manipulation and human error, hence the operative word being suedo. Uh, the truth is we Israelites have always been subject to a heavenly government, be it one or many. We've always been a nation under Yahweh, given to order and governed by his laws, uh, statutes, and his commandments. Uh, Genesis 1 and 2 shows us from the very beginning, Yahweh created order out of chaos. Something the wicked elite try to mimic today, but to the detriment of the earth and the other nations, not excluding his own. Uh, Genesis 1 and 26 tells us that uh, Yahweh and his first fruits of the spirit set their likeness on man and gave us order. We sons of light were set up to rule, uh, have rulership, power and authority, knowledge and, and dominion over all on the earth. Just as laws and order governs the heavens and the spiritual realm, so too was it given to man. No matter the multitude being governed by a heavenly order can never be a bad thing. When Yahweh Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai returns, the very same order will be reinstituted and everything that has run this earth muck will be done away with. There is a saying that uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely. This applies to the corruptible spirit that rules over us now. It is because we were disobedient to the heavenly father, we are subject to this corruption. Isaiah 3 and 8. Let's go there. And it says this, For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord, whose true name is Yahweh, to provoke the eyes of his glory. This is why we were punished, we being the hopeful elect men, being the, the true fallen angels. This is why we were punished and fell from our first estate. It is only when we repent and turn back to the Lord will all this hell within itself is a process that we must forego to uh, to be purged. But until we repent and go back to being governed by those same laws, statutes and commandments of the Heavenly Father, will all this madness of our now existence be made right. 
Until then, Yahweh's will will be done. And Esau, according to the scriptures, until an appointed time by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Esau and his pseudo science will have free reign. Uh, before we go there, though, let's get this in um, the book of Daniel, Daniel 7 and 25. And it reads, and he shall speak, and the he, the he is uh, Esau Edom, who currently rules the world. Great words against the Most High. How? By setting himself up as not only an equal to, but a rival of the Most High Power, Yahweh, uh, and his law, statutes, and commandments. Everything Esau does is adverse to Yahweh's laws and, and his order. And shall wear out the saints of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, and how did he do that? <laughs> we can start through, uh, let's say, captivity through um, forced labor and bondage, i.e. slavery in the antiquities uh, throughout history and even now in its contemporary form, uh, working a nine to five with minimal pay. Plantation Christianity, which still to this day runs rampant across the earth. Uh, the prison industrial complex, which speaks to draconian laws and measures he implements that unjustly locks us away for football numbers so that he can profit uh, even for the most minimal infractions for instance uh, 90 plus years sentences for selling weed only for him to turn around and legalize it cultivate it package it and distribute it for pay himself today by simply doing what changing his law uh, through police brutality putting poison into our our neighborhoods using low vibrational music as a weapon against us uh, rewarding our children for playing the role of new age demons, uh, rewarding our women for playing the role of self-sufficient whores uh, through his wicked philosophies, through mainstream media, using the news to demonize and slander we Israelites inside and outside of this truth. And let's not forget the horrific things he's done to our people during captivity and the atrocities he's committed against us here in South America and the Caribbeans and those scattered the world over and think to change times and laws by changing the calendar, the observance of a strictly solar calendar, for instance, introducing ideas like daylight savings time and, and leap years, changing the laws, statutes, and commandments in every way imaginable, uh, the laws of natural order, the laws of nature, i.e. same sex, marriage, uh, transgenderism, etc., etc., and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and dividing of time so from about the year 1620, uh, the Renaissance period to 1969, when Elder Abba Bivens first brought out this truth. And now that we know what time it is, <laughs> there ain't a damn thing Esau can do with his pseudo science to change his date with destiny. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9. Uh, before that, I'm going to pause uh, for a brief moment and fix the uh, background noise. Bear with me, Yashar Allah. Salakia. Second Thessalonians 2 and 9 says this, even him, the him being the son of perdition as uh, described in the eighth verse of the same chapter, perdition meaning destruction, which we know speaks to the so-called white man, his proper name being Esau Edom, the nation of Esau speaking to the biblical Edomites, the, the uh, white establishment, so you can understand who rules the earth by violence. Uh, broken treaties, empty promises, and deceit, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, uh, power given to them from on high, of course, by way of the spiritual demon Satan, Esau being Satan's physical counterpart here on earth, uh, ultimately to serve out the Heavenly Father, Yahweh's purpose and will, and to bring about his judgments. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, uh, no coincidence lying written here in the Greek is translated as suedos, meaning false, uh, fake, spurious, uh, uh, hoax, or sham. Esau's uh, suedo science is what has given the impression amongst the other nations that Esau is an all-powerful God and only the only one worthy uh, to rule. What is suedo science? A collection of beliefs or uh, practices mistakenly regarded as being based on scientific method. Uh, beginning with the 1% uh, of the top banking families of the world, Esau's power is after the working of Satan again. 
Satan his physical equivalent in spiritual form and gets his own power from the Most High. Examples of uh, the misuse of his uh, scientific method. Uh, we can go to uh, uh, one ever so apparent is Kill Gates of Hell and his eugenics program, uh, which includes using the CV-19 Maxine as a catalyst for depopulation and implementing the uh, the M A R K the M O T B Harvard under the uh, the direction of said demon Kill Gates and their uh, attempt to block out the sun you know, covert bio warfare operations like HIV AIDS Ebola H one N one swine flu uh, psychological operations false flags agent provocateurs the demonizing of we Israelites. Uh, teaching this truth, all the workings of Satan. And let's not forget one of his grandest deceptions, one of his most wickedest philosophies in the spirit of, of witchcraft today, democracy. The word uh, democracy comes from the Greek word demos, meaning common people. Uh, common folk are known as a mob. Uh, Krasi is from the Latin kratia, kratos being the Greek. They both mean the same thing, power, might, uh, strength, uh, to sway um, authority, rule, uh, etc. Uh, ergo, democracy, simply put, means mob rule. What is a mob? Uh, the dictionary defines it as a large crowd of people, especially one that is disorderly and intent on causing trouble or violence. Uh, Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Well, who rules the earth today? Uh, Psalm 58 and 2, yea, in heart, you work wickedness, you weigh the violence of your hands in the earth, meaning responsible for spreading violence throughout the land. Which country is known for being at war just as long as they've been a country? There is no bigger mob than the American government with Esau Edom sitting in the power seat. Uh, the voting system itself is a farce. Uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt himself said, presidents aren't elected, they're selected. Uh, voting is the illusion they give to pacify you with the idea you actually have a say in who rules over you. Uh, sorry, it's just not so. Uh, incidentally, the word demon and democracy share the same root word that means to divide. And that is what happens with a democratic voting system. Uh, the two-pronged system is set up to divide a people because a separated people is a people that is more easy to control. Uh, democracy is Esau Edom's covert system of control, and it is exactly demons who are selected to rule over you. Which brings us back to the opening clip, government. Now, the common definition for the word government is the form of or system of rule by which a state community is governed. Then there's the uh, etymology for the word government. Uh, let's get that. Um, bear with me here. Uh, it says this, um, late 14th century act of governing or ruling, 1550s, system by which a thing is governed, especially a state. From old French government, uh, control, direction, administration. Modern French government from govern governor to steer by be at the helm of uh, govern, rule, command, direct. From Latin, gubernare, to direct, rule, guide, govern. Originally to steer, to pilot. Then there's the off the books definition. Government as a compound word, govern meaning to rule over or control. The suffix meant having several origins. One origin is the Latin meaning the mind. Ergo government simply means mind control. There are a plethora of examples, far too many to count, but the most relevant example to date is the ensuing implementation of the M-A-R-K, the R-F-I-D, C-H-I-P, we know, to speak to uh, Revelation 13 and 16 on down, the mark of the beast. Elon Musk's uh, Neuralink is a testament uh, to that. The M-O-T-B will be the final system of control the elite uh, hope to put in place under the form of a one world uh, government and new world order before the return of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Ezekiel 35 and 2. Let's go there. Matter of fact, we'll start at 1. Uh, Ezekiel 35 and 1 says this uh, Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. Mount Seir is the government of Esau, the nation of Esau Edom and their headquarters is America. Uh, set thy face against for what? To prophesy judgment for Esau's perpetual hatred against his brother Jacob. Uh, verse 5, 
in this chapter is the uh, precept there. Never mind the atrocities that's carried out on the earth and uh, the many abominations he has committed against the Heavenly Father. What the leading authorities in science won't say is that Esau is an unjust man and not fit to rule. Uh, Psalm 58 and 3 tells you that Esau, who we know to be the wicked, pursuant to Job 9 and 24 and uh, Malachi 1 and 4, are estranged from the womb, meaning they are a stranger to do what's right. They are estranged from the womb. They come out speaking lies. And again, that lie is his uh, suedo signs. For those late to the supper table, mountains can represent rulerships. They can represent kingdoms or systems of government in the scriptures. When you hear Mount Seir in the Bible, it's specifically talking about Esau's rulership and ruling class. Uh, today, they are the elite and the international banking families. Uh, Ezekiel 35 and 2 is a future prophecy. Ezekiel 35 and 3 speaks to what will befall Esau for his unrighteous acts. And it says this, And say unto it, Thus saith the Lord Power, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh. Now the house of Edom, Babylon the Great, aka America, and its allies will be destroyed and laid to waste by thermonuclear intercontinental ballistic hypersonic missiles and the lasers from the chariots of Yahweh's armies. Uh, the scriptures refer to Yahweh as the Lord of Sabaoth. These are things that you are seeing playing out now. You're seeing that these governments across the earth um, are being riled up and uh, they are being pitted against each other. But uh, you're also seeing a, a heavy play of so-called UFOs and IFOs uh, coming out in the news and them uh, trying to use it to uh, to perpetuate the idea that there will be an invasion. They're just not telling you what the invasion is. Uh, the real invasion anyways. Let's go to Romans 9 and 29. I didn't intend for this, uh, this lesson to be long, so uh, let's, let's go there. Um, and it says this, and as Isaiah's, uh, Isaiah in the OT, properly Yeshai in the, uh, the Hebrew said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth, Sabaoth meaning troop, uh, Yahweh is the Lord over and power behind a great army of heavenly hosts. Not only the celestial beings, but, but also his, uh, his terrestrial messengers, if you will. And again, it, it still doesn't stop there. Uh, the missiles in their perfect formation pursuant to Joel, the second chapter, the men of the Lord, of course. Even Esau himself is a part of the Lord's army of troops. Except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Saddam and be made like unto Gomorrah. And that seed is the remnant of Israel, the Israel of Yahweh, the elect of Yasharala. Uh, Matthew 17 and 20 is a great precept here. And uh, it says this, And Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. To quote uh, Elder Yashawamba from the Dallas camp, double honors unto you, uh, Elder, you do rule well. Are the hopeful elect men of the Lord not moving mountains with our teachings and our bringing out and breaking down of the prophecies? That are now you're seeing coming to pass is the truth not dispelling the lies and the deceit that esau and his uh kin amalek alike has used to compel and control the entire world i'm asking uh let's close out with this thus saith the lord power yahweh art thou he of whom i have spoken in old time by my servants the prophets of israel which prophesied in those days Many years that I would bring thee against them. And uh, that is Ezekiel 38 and 17. Uh, the prophets of the antiquities who are back today, the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. That's uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 32. That is the precept. Having prophesied about these same things and are back here today, speaking to the same judgment of destruction that will ensue Esau speedily, uh, with efficiency, expeditiously if you will, uh, Ezekiel 38 and 18. And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog, which represents Russia and her allies, who we know according to the scriptures will be responsible for Babylon, the great's great downfall, shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord Power Yahweh, uh, because Russia along with its allies is going to totally obliterate the land of Israel, uh, home of present day Amalek, the so-called JWs with the nuclear missiles. 
that my fury shall come up in my face. Uh, here, Yahweh's face is a reference to the chariots, the, uh, the fathership, the so-called UFOs and IFOs, if you will. Uh, IFOs identified as flying objects. We know them to be the chariots of the Lord. Uh, the lasers and the jet propulsion, uh, Psalm 18 and 8 is the precept there. Yahweh's, it, that speaks to the Lord's face. Uh, Yahweh's anger will boil over and show on his face. Ezekiel 38 and 19, for in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Uh, when the missiles start to pop and drop, <laughs> then the whole world will know it is the power of the true and living God that has spoken these things and brought all his uh, judgments to pass. Uh, surely in that day there shall be a great shaking indicative of the nuclear war that will befall, befall the, uh, the land of the Khazars uh, and uh, again this, the so-called JEWs and modern day Israel. Ezekiel 38 and 20, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. Uh, meaning the government officials of this earth responsible for the earth's polluting on a physical as well as a spiritual level shall be displaced and will be left to tremble at Yahweh while Yahweh shines power and uh, no matter what they do no matter all the steps they take again that they're using with their pseudo science or their ideologies to combat and, and, and circumvent these things uh coming to pass just not so it will never happen when the lord says it it's law and uh yahweh nor his laws changes changes for no one with that, I'll say, call halal Yahweh Bashem Yashai Bashem Akakodash through the power and spirit. I hope you edified. Double honors unto the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who teach us 100% truth and rule well. Uh, Shalom to the hopeful elect. Remember, no tests, no yab, and damn sure. Don't take that C to the H to the I to the P. Shalom, Yashar Allah. Shalom to the elect. <laughs>